Welcome to part three in the Rapture and Wrath, Ready or Not video series. In this episode, I'll be discussing the epic events occurring within a brief but crucial interval between the breaking of the sixth and seventh seals around the scroll in the book of Revelation. Before God's wrath and fury rains down upon a sinful and unrepentant earth during the day of the Lord, 144,000 Jews will be sealed for protection, and the faithful followers of Jesus Christ will be gloriously raptured. In part 2b of this series, I explained that the breaking of the first six seals around the scroll and the prophetic events associated with each of these seals. I then went on to explain that these events, which are described in detail by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 6, precisely parallel the teaching of Jesus to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24. Once again, the first four seals around the scroll equate to four satanically empowered horses and riders, which will be the causal agents for the emergence of false Christs, war, famine, and pestilence. They will do their evil work during the first three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. By the time they gallop off the scene, much of the earth will be reeling from the chaos, devastation, and destruction they've caused. Yet the Lord says that this will be only the beginning of sorrows, or more literally, the beginning of birth pangs. His message couldn't be clearer. As destructive as the first four horses and riders will be, the worst is still to come. The pressure against God's people is going to increase dramatically with the breaking of the fifth seal. Unlike the first four seals, the fifth seal has no horse and rider associated with it. However, because the persecution of God's elect is greatly increased in connection with this seal, the Lord calls the fifth seal the Great Tribulation. The fifth seal begins at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week. The catalyst for the Great Tribulation will be the abomination of desolation. It is then that many believers will be martyred by the Antichrist because they will not take his mark or give him their allegiance. They will remain faithful to the Lamb of God who encouraged his followers with this promise. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. The Lord warned that if those days of great tribulation were not cut short, no believing flesh would survive. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The fifth seal, which is the great tribulation, is commonly taught today to last three and a half years, when in reality, according to the scriptures, it is actually less than three and a half years for the elect. It is amputated or cut short before the end of Daniel's 70th week. Satan will empower the Antichrist for three and a half years, but his unobstructed power to kill believers during the fifth seal terminates with the opening of the sixth seal. With the breaking of the sixth seal, suddenly and without advance notice, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall from heaven. This will be a terrifying event for the unsaved world. This cosmic disturbance associated with the sixth seal is the clear indicator that the day of the Lord's wrath is about to begin. With the opening of the seventh seal, the world will see the Lord coming in the clouds to resurrect the dead in Christ, immediately followed by the rapture of living believers. What is crucially important for you to understand is this. While believers are not destined to encounter God's wrath, Many who will be living up until the time of the rapture will encounter the persecution of the Antichrist. Well-intentioned and sincerely held beliefs to the contrary, which offer a false hope of a so-called pre-tribulation rapture, will pose a great danger to the one generation of believers who will enter the future 70th week. The chronology of end-time events, as I've explained to this point, is clearly evidenced within the pages of Scripture. The first six seals were opened in sequence in Revelation chapter 6, but the opening of the seventh seal is not found there. Both logic and continuity suggest that the seventh seal should be found at the beginning of chapter 7, but it's not there. Not until chapter 8 is the seventh seal opened. John wrote of the Lamb of God, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. The silence in heaven immediately prior to the beginning of the day of the Lord is a prophesied event usually overlooked 
by Bible teachers. The prophet Zephaniah wrote, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The devastating divine judgment which is about to begin on earth brings silence to the angelic host of heaven and the newly arrived, resurrected, and raptured saints. So unlike the first six seals, which were consecutive and uninterrupted, the breaking of the seventh seal, which is going to unleash the wrath of God, is suddenly delayed by the events of chapter 7. What can be so important that it interrupts the continuity between the sixth seal, which announces the coming of Christ and His impending wrath, and the seventh seal, which when broken, begins that wrath? In Revelation 6, with the opening of the sixth seal, we are told God's wrath is come. That is, it is an overhanging event about to occur. In Revelation 8, with the opening of the seventh seal, God's wrath begins immediately to fall upon the earth. Between the warning that God's wrath is about to begin in chapter 6 and the actual beginning of that wrath in chapter 8 lies Revelation 7. This chapter presents a critical portrait of two distinct groups of people. In chapter 7, John sees four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, empowered to hold back the wind on the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. Then suddenly, John beholds another angel ascending from the east. Apparently, he is an angel of higher rank than the first four angels. He carries an urgent message in the form of a command. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not, or don't damage the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. Hurting the earth is to be withheld until these servants of the Lord are sealed in their foreheads. The word sealed is used 15 times in six short verses of Scripture. The sealing of these servants of God is mentioned on another occasion when they're referred to as having their father's name written or sealed in their foreheads. Sealing carried with it two important concepts. The first concept of sealing is ownership. Whoever's name was on the seal owned what the seal was attached to or contained. In the case of the 144,000, their father's name was written on their foreheads. They belonged to him. In Revelation 13, the Antichrist demands men and women have his mark or name or number of his name in their right hand or forehead. The purpose is to indicate that those who take his mark belong to him and can function in his short-lived kingdom by buying and selling. Taking the Antichrist mark guarantees eternal judgment and separation from God, an action no true believer will ever take. The second concept of sealing is protection. Those who are sealed by God's angels belong to God and are therefore protected by God. Believers are sealed by the Holy Spirit at the time of salvation. Therefore, they belong to God and are protected by God. Those who are sealed in Revelation 7 belong to God, and He protects what belongs to Him. This is the basis of the urgent command to the four angels to cease and desist from hurting the earth until these servants of God are sealed. Those who are sealed are to remain on the earth during the day of the Lord's wrath, but they will be protected from that wrath. Who are these sealed servants of God? John went to great lengths to clearly identify this group. They are 144,000 in number. They are from the children of Israel. There are 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. If words are intended to convey truth, if they can be understood, then this much is clear. When John identified this group as the children of Israel, that's exactly what he meant. The 144,000 will be the first fruits of a great harvest of Jews and Gentiles who come to faith in Christ and enter His millennial kingdom in mortal bodies. Now a second group is brought into focus. This group is called a great multitude. They're so large a multitude that no man could number them. Therefore, this multitude must be larger than the 144,000 mentioned above. They are said to be from all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, which means languages. They're seen standing in heaven before the throne and before the Lamb. 
They're clothed with white robes. They have palm branches in their hands. But this great multitude isn't silent. They're singing a psalm of praise to the Lord with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and to the Lamb. When this great multitude suddenly appears in heaven, all the angels, elders, and living creatures are there to joyously greet them. But we don't see the church listed as part of the greeting committee in heaven because the great multitude just arriving is the church. The Lord himself identifies this great multitude which came out of great tribulation. Let's take another look at his teaching to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24. So in Matthew 24, 21, we read immediately after the tribulation of those days. What tribulation? The tribulation which is the great tribulation in seal number five. So with the breaking of the fifth seal, you have the great tribulation which takes you all the way until seal number six. So let's keep reading. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the great tribulation of the fifth seal, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is the cosmic disturbance of the sixth seal announcing the coming of the Lord to punish the world for its sin. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They're mourning because they know that his wrath is about to fall on them. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Once again, this is the raptured church, the great multitude which no one can number from every nation, kindred, people, and tongue, from one end of heaven to the other. So here's the bottom line. In Revelation chapter 6, with the breaking of the sixth seal, we see that God's wrath is about to begin. And in chapter 8, with the breaking of the seventh seal, we see that God's judgment of the earth begins. In between, in chapter 7, we see two major events occurring. First, 144,000 Jews are sealed for protection just prior to the day of the Lord's wrath. Second, a great multitude that no one can number, the raptured church, is caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds. A pre-wrath rapture of the church is completely in sync with the timing and placement of these two key events. The chronology and sequence is unforced and adheres to the biblical text without contorting it in any way. Once again, the entire scene in chapter 7 suggests a flawless passing of the baton. The church will be raptured before the seventh seal is broken because she is not appointed unto God's wrath. But immediately prior to the church's rapture, 144,000 Jews will be sealed for protection as they remain on the earth during the day of the Lord. I trust this has been helpful in your quest to understand the biblical chronology of end time events. Thank you for watching. In the next episode of this series, part four, we'll explore the sobering events of Revelation chapter eight. In the previous chapter, heaven was alive with the songs of praise being sung by the heavenly multitude. But when the seventh seal is opened, heaven will be enveloped in absolute silence for the space of half an hour. It is the realization in heaven that God is about to go to war on the earth, which will initiate the silence. Go deeper in your understanding of God, His people, and His plan for planet Earth. Zion's Fire magazine is an exceptional resource with powerful insights from Scripture that provide a clear understanding of God's ultimate plan for the last days and the return of Jesus Christ. As a first-time subscriber, you'll receive a free one-year subscription to Zion's Fire magazine with no strings attached. Request your free subscription by visiting our website or by calling our toll-free number and we'll send you six free issues, one every other month, for a full year. We depend on the generosity of viewers like you to support the ongoing production of these programs. Your donation, whether large or small, is greatly appreciated. 
Donations may be given online at www.zionshope.org or by calling us toll-free at 1-888-781-9466. Stay informed and see the latest from Zion's Hope by liking us on Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and following us on Twitter.